Praise be to the Father, praise be to the Son, praise to the Holy Spirit. We're just so grateful to be here today. We're so grateful for another day that God has given us. We're so grateful that as Christians we understand the true God who has come to earth to die on a cross for us, for everybody who will receive him. He's that merciful. And why did he have to do it? He had to do it because the world is in a mess. The beautiful world that he created got in a mess. Why? Because of mankind, because of our sin. And it's because of sin that we see so much damage, so much damage there is today. And one of the ways in which we see sin manifested is through uh, false ideologies. And obviously here at Speaker's Corner at DCCI, we talk about Islam as one of those false ideologies a lot. And what we've seen recently in the news is some of the fruit of Islam, the, some of the fruit of the teaching of Islam, which is jihad, and some recent terror plots that have been in the news. In particular, there have been uh, two we want to just focus on today, even though every day from around the world we can see uh, stories of jihad coming from everywhere, coming from all over the place, coming from Nigeria, coming from Indonesia, wherever. But here are just a couple from the UK. Um, the first one is, uh, this was about a week ago, we heard uh, the sentencing of uh, a man for plotting to, k to kill Prince George, of all people. Like little tiny Prince George, only four or five years old. He that was. turned five. Oh, sorry, he turned five. Hussein Rashid, jailed for life. What were his crimes? Hussein, so maybe you'd like to tell us some of his crimes. So, Hussein Rashid is someone who has been following ideology called Islam. Hussein Rashid is someone who is following this book like lots of other Muslims. And this Hussein Rashid, as he follows this book, he decides because of the teachings of this book, he can plan to take away the life of Prince George, who is only five years old, sir. Now that's nothing to do with Islam. It's oh, nothing it's to do with Islam. We have a Muslim here who's telling us that it's nothing to do with Islam. So we're going to get to that. So just stay up and stick around and we're going to get to that. Let's go into the details of some of the things that Hussein Rashid was going to do. Okay? According to police, he planned atrocities on a colossal scale using encrypted messages service, sending out advice about poisons, vehicle weapons, bombs, chemicals and knives. Now, I know you'll like this statistic, Hatim. He sent out 360,000 terror messages in one year. How many messages is that per day, roughly, about terror, about jihad, about killing? A lot of messages. That's a lot of messages. And so, 360,000 messages to encourage other Muslims to kill people who do not follow this book hmm. and who do not follow men called Muhammad. Hmm. Now, Let's also read some quotes from Hussein Rashid and let's see how much they measure up to what is taught in the crowd. Here's one. Look around you, this is from Hussein Rashid, look around you how many infidels you can reach and kill with your car, knife or even a stone or poisoning them. Go out and take revenge. What are you waiting for? We ask Allah to bless you and make you successful. Where do you think that comes from? So I am sure that comes from the Quran and I am sure this Muslim man will help us out. <laughs> Oh, Sir, sorry for mistaken. No, we, did, we are not mistaken because he already told the Shahada before he started heckling. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. already sign when someone says, I should not lie, Allah, I should not Muhammad and Abdul Rasulullah, that's already sign that you follow this book and also you follow Muhammad. So, it is this book identifies non Muslim as. It is this book, yes, I am infidel, and what did Hussein Rashid tells, tells people about me? Sorry? He calls me infidel. What yes. does Hussein Rashid calls, tells about infidel? Uh, he says you're meant to go and kill the unbeliever. This is Surah 929. He says, fight those who do not believe in Allah or in the last day, who do not consider unlawful what Allah and his messenger have made unlawful and do not adopt the religion of truth from those who are given the scripture. He also says something about the steeds of war, Allah, doesn't he? Uh, okay, uh, you move so quickly. Oh, sorry. So let's look at, let's look at Surah 8, verse 60 mm. to see what Straight out to the Quran. Rashid tells us. Can Let's you read can, it. Listen. Come here. Can you read that? 
Hüseyin Reşit 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 quotation on the Surah 8 verse 16. Yes. Can Sorry. Okay, let's read Hussein's qu Rashid's quotation again. We've had a few interruptions. It says this, look around how many infidels you can reach and kill with your car, knife, or even a stone or poisoning them. Go out and take revenge. What are you waiting for? We ask Allah to bless you and make you successful. Let's see if it has anything to do with the Quran. Surah 8 verse 16. And prepare against them whatever you are able of power of states of war. Oh, so things like cars, right? Things like vehicles, anything, whatever anything. you can use, poison. By which you may terrify the enemy of Allah and your enemy and others beside them, whom you do not know, whom Allah knows. And whatever you spend in the cause of Allah will be fully repaid to you and you will not be wronged. Hmm. So it sounds very whatever close. Whatever you find, go and kill those findings, go and kill those people who do not accept Allah and who do not accept Muhammad. Yeah. That will be us. Yeah. But Actually, Hattin, I'm sorry, I think you've got that all wrong because actually this is all about context, right? It is all about context. And that context screams out again, kill those who are not worshipping Allah and the Muhammad. Mm. So context is the same. Context doesn't tell you go and have hot chocolate for those who do not believe in Muhammad. Context tells you find whatever you can to take the life of non-Muslims. So what Hussein Rashid is telling people is exactly what the Quran is telling people. I've got another quote from him. Let's see what it says. He says, he urged his readers to fight and spill the blood to the apes. I think he means of the apes. Fight and spill the blood of the apes in your land and start preparing tools and weapons stroke explosives. Where else in Islam do we read about apes? Apes are to Quran is talking about apes, not as Muhammad or Allah visit the region Park Zoo or Zoo in Bek Street, but it is used talking about apes as the people of the book, Jew people. Mm -hmm. Jewish are called according to Quran as apes. Mm -hmm. Reason for that is because they break the Sabbath. Mm. Should we read that verse? This is Surah 560. This is again what Allah calls Jews and Christians. And again, we'd have to ask ourselves what kind of God is this that uses such derogatory language in this way? Where are we? 560. Mm. Say, shall I inform you of verse than that as penalty from Allah? It is that of those who Allah has cursed and with whom he become angry and made them made of them apes and pigs and slaves of Tagrod. Mm. Those are birds in position and father astray from the sound way. Hmm. So it's interesting, isn't it, that Hussein Rashid uses the word apes about certain people. He doesn't use the word, I don't know, snakes or cockroaches or something like that. The fact is he uses analogies straight out of this book, straight out of this book, the Quran, which for Muslims is their guidance. Every part of it should be binding for Muslims. This is something that should really worry them. And this is why we want to encourage our Muslim friends to leave this behind and come to Christ. We're going to get on to that. But before we do, let's talk about another jihadi who was recently convicted of a, an attempt to try and behead Theresa May and I think blow up number 10. His name is Naimur Zakaria Rahman, 20 years old, young guy, and he was caught wanting to behead Theresa May. Is there anything in the Quran, Hatun, about beheading people? What kind of question is that? Oh, you just enlighten us. So, a man, another man, who followed a religion called Islam, identifies himself as a Muslim, reads the Quran, studies the biography of Muhammad and customs of Muhammad, yet wants to behead the Prime Minister of UK. You look at the Quran and Quran talks about chop their head off, chop their hand off, chop their feet off. 
Lots. Mm, lots of chopping. Lots of let's, chopping. Let's go to the head it's part like, anyway. It's not like salad. 47, so 47 verse 4 maybe? Let me see who gets there first. You need a religion that's less about chopping. You value make those who disbelieve. Theresa May does not believe mm -hmm. in Allah no. and she does not believe in Muhammad is a prophet. I don't believe in Allah. I don't believe Muhammad is the prophet. Value make those who disbelieve. Strike next, strike their necks until when you have inflicted slaughter upon them, then spirit bonds and either favor afterwards or ransom, ransom until the board lays down its burden. So we got that strike their necks, strike their necks, the disbelievers, 47 Ayatollah. This gentleman, let me get his name again, Naimur, he's just being very faithful to his book. While we're on the subject, we have a few more chopping verses. What about, for example, Surah 5, Ayah 33? The recompense of those who wage war against Allah and his messenger and do mischief in the land, okay, a bit of mischief in the land, right, is only that they should be killed or crucified and their hands or their feet be cut off from opposite sides. Now, is there a verse, sorry, Hatun, this might just be me completely misunderstanding things. Is there a verse that says, actually, don't do this anymore, Muslims? Not in the Quran. Ah, oh, is there anywhere? Yes, there is anywhere. 21st century. Go to the Muslim book tables, Islamic book tables, which is a big sign. Islam is the religion of peace. You probably find something similar in the book tables. But Nothing in the Quran tells you to have a peace for those who do not believe in Allah. There is nothing in the Quran tells you to love for those who do not believe in Allah and who do not believe in Muhammad. When people of Islam, people who follow the religion of Islam and Muhammad, follow their book and then decide to take the life of five years old child or so the prime sick. minister, they can justify that from their own scripture. Yeah, what we want to say, we want to be absolutely clear. Muslims, see how wrong this is. See how sick these scriptures are that tell you to go and chop people's heads off, to tell you to go and chop people's hands and feet off at opposite sides. Don't worship a God that commands you to do this here today, 2018. Hatu, what does script what does Christian speech teach instead? We want to give you an alternative now. What does Christian te uh, scripture teach? As we acknowledge that every human beings are simple, as we acknowledge that every human being needs to have peace with God and with one another, we also acknowledge that comes that comes only from Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Christian scripture does not give me any right to take any life of other people. Christian scripture doesn't give me right to go and kill Prince George or go and kill the Prime Minister of UK. Or anyone. Christian scripture tells me, it is very clear, I must love my enemies, mm. I must pray for them. Mm. I cannot take their life. I cannot take their life. Yet, Islam steps in and then tells you, you can take the life of people who do not follow the religion of mm. Islam. And what did Jesus tell his followers when Jesus was arrested? When Jesus was arrested, what did he, and they wanted to save him, they wanted to rescue him from a, from a violent situation with violence. What does Jesus say? Jesus said, put your sword back in its place, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father and he will at once put at, the, at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled um, 
but say it must happen in this way. Jesus tells us not to respond to, to, to evil with evil, but instead he has to fulfill the scriptures. What does he do then? He fulfills the scriptures by actually dying on the cross, by taking the sin of the whole world on the cross so that we can have peace with God. And the scandalous thing about that, the scandalous thing about that is that that grace, that forgiveness, that mercy of God is available even for terrorists, even for would-be murderers, even... No, 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 I leave it. I leave it this far, in it? Oh, you can leave it back. It's not your property, sir. It's not your property. It's not your, it's not your property, sir. It's not your property. It's not your relax, 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 everyone relax. Everyone relax. Relax, 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 sir. Relax. Relax, 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 relax. Just relax, sir, relax, relax. Why are you doing it? Why are you doing it? Come here, come. Why are you doing it? Why are you doing it? Okay. Well, yeah, we can't. Are we, they're not, no one's filming us, though. Paul? Paul? Okay. Sorry. That's what happens sometimes. Muslims get more cross about the positioning of a book than they do about somebody wanting to behead Prince George. That's how poisonous Islam is. Okay, let me finish what I was saying. What I was saying is Jesus in his mercy, God in his mercy, would die on the cross for would-be murderers, would-be terrorists, actual murderers, actual terrorists. So they have a way of forgiveness. They don't get there unless they truly repent and believe in Jesus. But that's how God merciful God is. That is the God that we want to offer Muslims. And that's the God that they need if they are going to stand before him on Judgment Day. Because one day, every knee will bow to Jesus, either willingly or unwillingly. Lord, we just really pray that Muslims make the right choice, that they leave this religion behind and they come to the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen.